Okay, so in this video we're going to be talking about this particular machine that you see in front of me. This is called a centrifuge casting machine. And uh, this is kind of the older way that we used to do this uh, before the vacuum unit came into play. And um, I'm just going to kind of explain the difference between them and how this works. Okay, so here in this uh, tub thing, this, uh, these walls protect us and property from uh, the potential danger that this machine uh, proposes. Um, essentially what can happen is because this arm is going to whip around rapidly, if there's something out of alignment or if the investment wasn't mixed properly or if there develops a crack or anything, uh, it can spray molten metal all over the place. So this is one big reason why vacuum casting is, in my opinion, uh, a safer way to go at the very least. So this machine itself is, requires no electricity. That's one of the big upsides in my opinion is that it's all uh, spring loaded. So this bar comes out, this is kind of the lock, and this gets wound up. I'm not gonna wind it up all the way because uh, it's a bit violent and we don't have anything in it to balance it. So that goes in and holds that back. Uh, this is actually a thing that I had to make for this. Um, this, this is actually a lock that's supposed to drop down, but um, in my experience with these machines, this, this little button lock thing down here that I don't think you can really see on the camera is, uh, is the first thing that always breaks. So this I just drilled a hole in the bottom and this holds it, holds it from going back. So then what you do is you take one of these crucibles that you can see around on the edge here. These have a dovetail on them and they slot in to the arm like so. And they line up with a hole. You put your metal in take your flask out of the kiln, like so, and you put it there, obviously without the rubber, it doesn't need to be there. And then this slides in and kind of locks everything in place. These things back here are weights. This one comes off, and these ones are, are threaded so that they can go back and forth fairly uh, accurately. And that makes sure that it's balanced so that this doesn't wobble all over the place. So you're melting, 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 and you take this off. Put that down, but I'm still holding onto the machine. Go back to the torch, make sure it's still fluid. Give it a couple of little knocks, because when you're torch melting, you can tell uh, more about the metal's temperature by how it moves than by how it looks. There's so much flame in the way, it's very difficult. So you're melting, and then as soon as you're ready to go, you let it go and it spins. Obviously, it's a lot faster than this, um, but it physically throws the metal into place and uh, you just kind of let it stop its, its cycle and uh, eventually you stop it, you pull this back, take out your flask and quench it in water and there's your casting. Um, so to kind of go more into why we decide not to use this machine, um, basically there's a few reasons. The, the first one is that uh, the flask sizes are much more economical with the vacuum casting. Uh, to put it into perspective, uh, this flask here, this is the, pretty much the largest flask that I could cast in this machine. And uh, this one would be pushing it, like it, I don't even think it fits right now. Uh, it could be modified to fit. Uh, this is a more normal size and uh, you could fit maybe, it depends on what it is obviously. You, you definitely couldn't fit you know, a full bracelet in something like this. Uh, ring wise you could probably do six ish, it's hard to say depending on ring size. Um, this is a flask size that I use for vacuum casting and uh, you can see that the, the difference is just astronomical. So I could do like a hundred rings in this if not more. I can do like full sword parts if necessary. Uh, we could do full bracelets, we could do a whole collection of bracelets in something like this. So the, the only limitation between these two is how do you melt that much metal and thankfully we have the tools for that. Um, with this, you have to use a torch. Um, if you've watched any of our previous videos, you've seen the, uh, the electro melter. Uh, with this system, you have to torch melt. You can't just use the electro melt, pour it in and let it go, because the metal will cool too quickly. Uh, it, it just has to be done that way. So there's also a myth that uh, I'll address with this briefly that I've heard around. Um, the myth is that a centrifuge cast will create a denser casting. I'm not entirely sure what that means because, you know, metal can be work hardened, but it's not like a gas where it's condensed. You know, it doesn't work that way. Um, so the bottom line is, is, is that 
this does not produce a better casting than vacuum cast. It just doesn't work that way. Uh, there's actually the, uh, the possibility with centrifuge casting that because this is in motion, um, if you don't develop your sprues in just such a way that the metal can go from the crucible and just go into place instantly, uh, it can create what's called turbulence. So the metal hits, say, a sharp corner and it'll start to roll on itself. It's already starting to harden up. It rolls on itself, hardens, it clogs the tube, or it doesn't quite get to the end of the cast, or something like that. And uh, you get porosity or incomplete uh, casts. So, to sum up the video about this, uh, this machine, um, if you ever see one of these for sale at a good price, or if you're given one, don't turn it away. They're still perfectly relevant to use. Uh, but bear in mind that all flasks should be vacuumed to get rid of all the bubbles. Um, and that's where the vacuum machine comes in the most is it will debubble your flask and it will cast it all in one. This one will just cast it. That's pretty much it. Uh, we're going to do a whole series about uh, casting, uh, primarily focusing on the vacuum system. Thank you for watching. Uh, like and subscribe if you're into this. Hopefully we'll see you next time.